<laughs> I was like, ow! Okay? At that point, you are encountering, you are creating air pressure because you're encountering X amount of molecules per second. Air can only compress so fast. So the faster I encounter air, the less it's resisting because it can't change its shape as fast as I'm encountering it. So literally, just like water skiing, I am planing on the air. I literally, at that point, am not per se creating lift anymore, but I literally have almost created a solid out of air, if you want to think of it that way. The faster I encounter it, the more air pressure, or the denser it relatively becomes. Okay? So I start dealing with some stuff. So let's talk about that. It's going to go into our discussion. So we have indicated air speed. We just talked about that. We're going to talk about just a little bit more. Um, what's calibrated air speed? Indi uh, indicated air speed. Correct for, for, for instrumentation air. Corrected for what? Instrument air. Correct for what? Your angle of attack. Yeah, ah, thank you. Yeah. I hate when they say that. It is not installation error. It's angle of attack error. Okay. Problem is, I've got my pitot tube hanging off this wing right here, and the air is coming at it like this. How much is actually entering the tube? Not, not as much. Okay. So if we look in our DA40 book, we find out that uh, when we're indicating 75 or whatever, we're really doing like 80. Okay. But as I get to a level angle of attack, what happens? Same. Same. So at normal cruising speeds, most airplanes, your calibrated and your indicated will be the same. Now as I go higher though, all right, so the low speed, my calibrated is higher. When I get to a higher speed, my calibrated is lower. Why? Can't compress as fast as everyone. Or can't compute it, I guess. More on the computation. It's the limitation of the airspeed indicator. The airspeed indicator in the diaphragm is only designed for a certain airspeed range. Once you get into the higher airspeeds, you're actually reaching the limit of that balloon or diaphragm to be able to expand anymore. So now, you, your calibrated airspeed will actually be lower than what you're indicating because that balloon is just getting a little too big in there. If you look at your jets, a lot of jet uh, airspeed indicators don't even come alive until like 60, 70, 80 knots because those, those are made for higher speeds, so that, that balloon won't even start inflating until it has at least that much air pressure inside of it. Okay, so there's my calibrated. So what's true? Calibrated. Corrected for non-standard temperature and pressure. Yeah. Corrected for non-standard temperature and pressure. That's what the book says, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So why, what happens to your airspeed as the altitude increases? How much? 2% per 1,000 feet. 2% per 1,000 feet. That's the rule of thumb. It is dang close. Like any day, people are like, oh, no, look, the temperature's extreme. You're always within four knots. When you're flying the G1000, it's really fun because it already tells you your true airspeed. So you can calculate it. You'll never be more than four knots off. So let's do a calculation real quick. So what that says is, if I'm flying at 12,000 feet, um, we're going 110 knots. And 110 knots indicated. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, third grade was easy. And uh, and my ground speed's 120. Oh yeah, headwind or tailwind? This is my favorite one in the katana. What does every student say? Tailwind. I got tailwind. All right, two percent per thousand feet. Twenty-four. So two times twelve. It's going to be twenty-four percent increase. So a really easy way. Well, I'm around about hundred. So twenty-four percent of that's going to be like what? Twenty-five. What's one ten plus twenty-five? One thirty-five. One thirty-five. True airspeed. I got a fifteen knot headwind. Okay. Especially around here where we fly at higher altitudes, the students don't understand that. They think they've got a headwind when they've got a tailwind, vice versa, whatever. Okay. So this rule of thumb, try it on your E6B. It's amazing. It works really fast. You can do it on your E6B still, but you'll always be within four knots. So still teach your students to use their E6B. But when you're in the cockpit, 
2% per thousand feet works really, really well. So now the question is why? Why does true airspeed increase with altitude? The air's thinner. Less dense. Dense. The air's thinner. All right, well, I'm a mechanic, so as we go up in uh, altitude, the air's thinner, so that means I'm getting less, less air. System. So I'm getting, uh, I'm getting less combustion in the engine. I'm getting less power. Uh, my prop doesn't have as much air to grab anymore. It's grabbing thinner air. So wouldn't that slow me down? There's less resistance. Yeah, less drag. Oh. And how does drag, we read this in our P hack, how does drag decrease and increase with airspeed? Squared. Squared. It's bigger when you're slower. So what? It's like four times more. It's squared. There you go. It's squared. So there's a graph that we have in the packet that we're going to hand out to you guys. We're basically going to go like this. Okay. We got 180 horsepower. Okay. Your horsepower decreases pretty much at a constant rate. Your horsepower decreases. It's like three percent of your horsepower per thousand feet. Two or three. Don't write that down because I can't remember which one it is. Ask Sean Flanagan. So it's three percent. It's got to be, because two percent is the true airspeed. I have stupid memory aids. Here's my altitude in thousands of feet as it goes up. Okay, so my horsepower at sea level is 180, right? In a Diamond Star. The horsepower decreases at an even rate through the altitude. I got less air molecules. I get less combustion. It's a percentage. It's very linear. Drag, however, decreases at a square. So at 3,000 feet, or whatever altitude I'm at, my drag has decreased this much. My engine performance has only decreased this much. So we're getting a much bigger decrease in drag than we are in actual engine performance. Why do jets fly at 30,000 feet? 30,000 feet, that's 30 times 2, that's a 60% increase in airspeed, and they're burning the exact same amount of fuel. So when you, if you own your own airplane, would you always try to fly higher or lower? Higher. Higher, as long as the wind's favored. You're going to get better fuel consumption, because you're going to get more speed out of it. Those jets are completely inefficient below, what is it, 25,000 feet? They're not even worth owning if you fly them below that because they burn, they burn so much fuel that they need that efficiency. Below 25? I'm not giving an exact number, I'm just saying somewhere around there. I can't remember what the thing is. You'll have to ask Bryce. Why does the D-Jet only certified up to 25? You only got one little engine on that thing. So it's a little bit different, but if you actually look at fuel consumption, it's pretty crappy. So that's why your jets fly up there, because that's where they get their efficiencies. Otherwise, it just gets more and more expensive the lower you have to fly. So, okay, so there's our true airspeed. So true airspeed is that. Now, as I go up in altitude, what happens to my indicated airspeed? It goes down. It does. It decreases. I can't get as fast as indicated airspeed. Why not? Less air molecules. I have less air molecules. So I don't have as much air pressure because the air molecules are thinner. So now. Indicated airspeed, let's go back to that. What does indicated really tell me? What airspeed do you stall at? Next time. Depends on the airspeed. S1 or S1? S1. S1 is 42. 42, yeah. What airspeed do you stall at at 15,000 feet? 42. Why doesn't it change? Always the same. The airspeed doesn't change. Air ah. Because all I'm doing is I'm comparing how many air molecules are available statically compared to how much air pressure I'm actually creating. So when I'm up at altitude and I've got 100 knots indicated, I am finding the same amount of air molecules as if I was down here at 100. And an airplane requires air molecules to fly. If I don't have air molecules, I fall. Right? If we compress this room with a bunch of air and I dropped a paper, it would take longer to descend, right? Because it would have more air resistance. It's like when they empty the lake when your water skiing. Sucks. It really sucks. <laughs> or you can just ski on Utah Lake and all of a sudden you're like, all right, I'm done. You let go and you're still standing up. 